All right. Thanks uh, for joining, everybody. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to learn more about Cisco Meraki. Today we're going to cover Orange County Public Schools and how they simplified IT with remote management. Uh, my name is Doug Sutter. I'm going to be the host for today. Uh, I'm actually an inside sales rep, and I cover eastern Pennsylvania here at Cisco Meraki. And I'm really excited to cover the content with you today. Uh, we also have a really exciting uh, guest speaker a little bit later in today's presentation. Uh, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump on in. Uh, so a few things that we're going to cover today. Uh, first, an introduction. So for any of you that are on the call today that may not know about Cisco Meraki or, or what we do, the technology that we offer, I'm uh, going to give you a nice high-level overview of, uh, of how we differentiate from a lot of the solutions that you'll see on the market today. Uh, secondly, I'm going to talk about uh, why, cloud, why you should consider cloud-managed IT. Uh, thirdly, we're going to get into probably the most exciting part of today's call. I uh, hear directly from a customer, uh, David Overton, who's the Senior Director of Information Security at Orange County Public Schools. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about his Cisco Meraki deployment. Um, I'm also going to get into a live demonstration of our headquarter location here in San Francisco. Uh, so that's going to be our live demo portion. And then followed up by uh, the Meraki solution, which is you know, our full stack, all the, the uh, amazing products and solutions that we offer, uh, followed up and, and wrapping it all up with some next steps and how you can learn more information as well after this call. So without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and jump right in. So uh, a little bit about Cisco Meraki, as I mentioned, I uh, want to start a little high level and tell you about uh, who we are, where we came from, and uh, how our technology is, is so groundbreaking, so different than what you'll see out there in the industry today. So uh, for those of you that uh, aren't aware of what we offer, uh, our mission and really what we're passionate here about, uh, what we're passionate about here at uh, Cisco Meraki is simplifying IT to give uh, everybody on this call uh, some time back, uh, make their jobs so much easier so that they can really get back to the things that you're most passionate about. We understand that you have a lot of things on your plate, so many initiatives with, you know, a lot of times less and less resources than you've seen in the past. So uh, our mission is to make it as simple as possible, and that's through our cloud-managed uh, uh, dashboard and cloud-managed solution. And you can see it's a full stack, what we like to call it a complete cloud-managed solution, including uh, wireless access points, uh, switches, security, uh, SD-WAN, unified endpoint management, UEM, MDM, EMM, uh, whatever you're uh, most familiar with, and uh, a few other really exciting new uh, categories to our product portfolio, like our physical security cameras, which are just amazing. Uh, and then, uh, last but not least, our uh, Cisco Meraki Insight as well. Uh, so we'll get into a few of those technologies, but the point is, uh, as you can see here, it's a full stack, complete cloud-managed solution uh, that's managed through a single pane of glass. And I know that term gets thrown out a lot. It's, it's really repetitive in our industry, uh, but if you're going to walk away with one thing after today's call, uh, what differentiates us from a lot of what you see out there is how simple and intuitive our dashboard is, uh, but it's our dashboard that's the differentiator. It's all through that single pane of glass. And we are the leader in cloud-managed IT uh, among Cisco's fastest growing portfolio, and it's just been truly amazing to see uh, the explosion, the exponential growth of customers who have adopted Cisco Meraki. And you can see there 250,000 unique customers over 300 or 3.5 million Meraki devices online, and over 5.5 million active Meraki dashboard users. And I got to say again, every time I log into Dashboard, we can see those numbers climbing, and it truly is amazing to see how many customers have chosen Meraki for their for their deployments. All right, so a little bit about our uh, how our technology works, um, how our design is different than a lot of uh, what you'll see out there, or what you may be used to in, in legacy solutions. Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, out-of-band cloud management. So, you know, no, the biggest part to take away from this is that no user traffic passes through the Meraki cloud. You can see that in the diagram on the right-hand side. Uh, it's only management data uh, that is uh, pushed from the Cisco Meraki cloud 
uh, down to Meraki devices, but user traffic uh, is, uh, never passes through the cloud. So it's amazingly secure. Uh, first and foremost, uh, again, back to our mission, we want to make it as simple and as intuitive as possible so that uh, browser-based dashboard is extremely easy to navigate. It's very intuitive. Uh, if I can uh, manage and navigate a Cisco Meraki dashboard, trust me, anybody on this call can. Uh, second, it's, uh, it's extremely scalable. So uh, there is no uh, uh, bottlenecks. Uh, it has a unlimited throughput. Uh, so you can basically add devices in sites or even minutes. And you're going to actually hear from David today. He was able to set up uh, his network in, uh, or his deployment uh, in four hours, which is just amazing and really speaks to the scalability of Cisco Meraki. Uh, third, it's uh, extremely reliable. So uh, with Cisco Meraki, we have multiple data centers uh, around the world, uh, four nines of uptime, so you never have to worry about the Cisco Meraki cloud uh, going down or so forth. It's extremely reliable. And last but not least, you know something that's on the forefront of, of everybody on this call, it's in the front of mind, is uh, ensuring that uh, students and teachers are always safe, that the network is always safe and secure. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, because of that out-of-band cloud management, no user traffic passes through the Meraki cloud. It's fully HIPAA and PCI compliance. And then we do third-party security audits and daily penetration testing, uh, just again to make sure that uh, your Cisco Meraki solution is always, always secure. And then uh, the last bullet point here is really, really important that there are automatic firmware and security updates that you can schedule uh, yourself to make sure that you know, these updates happen during you know, times of lower traffic. Uh, but I also want to touch on the fact that you know, with Cisco Meraki, our firmware uh, updates are not just around security and uh, ensuring that you get those security updates like you know, many of you are probably used to. We actually have many, many updates that include enhancements and new features that are brand new to our dashboard. And I got to tell you, you know, again, covering Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, I love when a customer calls me all excited about a new uh, feature functionality that they just found in dashboard. It's kind of like, you know, hunting and, and finding something brand new for the first time. So, uh, what's great again is that even our oldest products, and I'll show you in our demo in a little bit. Uh, continue to get better, and we continue to push out new features constantly. Uh, and you can find out more if you want to um, read up a little bit more on our reliability and security information uh, by visiting meraki.cisco.com forward slash trust. All right, so uh, Meraki for primary education and IT teams. This is, uh, we, we know here at Meraki that uh, you have many, many um, you know, things that are, are forefront uh, of your mind that you are trying to accomplish. Um, you have many projects on your plate. And uh, when it comes to how uh, Cisco Meraki can help you accomplish those, uh, those goals, first and foremost would be, you know, for high density deployments, we have a full range of high performing access points without uh, the high maintenance that you may be used to in a legacy solution. Uh, so that'll let you uh, design and deliver that real cutting edge uh, experience in classrooms of all sizes. Uh, so whether it's a gymnasium or an auditorium, um, a football field or, or large areas all the way down to the smallest classroom, uh, we can uh, tailor fit a solution based on our full uh, set of uh, products and um, you know, right now we're at a full wave two um, deployment of access points, so uh, really cutting edge and have really a solution for any need. Uh, second would be safety and security. So as I mentioned, you know, we understand that that's first and foremost for many of you on the call today. Um, so when it comes to keeping students and teachers safe, we have options uh, ranging from you know, whether it's perimeter network security all the way down to physical campus security. And I mentioned one of the most exciting brand new features to our portfolio is our security cameras. And uh, that's been just something that has been uh, fantastic to see grow, really adopted, um, you know, throughout the, the country. And customers are really loving the fact that um, now can, they can manage their, their perimeter and physical security in that same single pane of glass. 
Uh, third, and I'm going to jump in and actually show you a lot of this during the demo portion. Uh, what's great is we give you the tools you need to really easily and quickly figure out uh, what may be happening if there is an event uh, within your network. Uh, great out-of-the-box analytics and tools uh, that allow you to move and uh, really hone in on you know, if there are issues, where, what, where it's occurring, and maybe fix it from anywhere in the world from any device. And last but not least, again, it's that you know, device management and being able to you know, manage thousands of devices with our systems manager, uh, whether that's iOS, Android, Mac, PC, all from a single pane of glass, uh, that single dashboard, uh, cloud-managed dashboard. Uh, so many of you on the call are, are all, already down the road on a one-to-one -one program have already deployed or maybe in the middle of a one-to-one -one rollout or maybe planning for a future rollout, uh, that's where you know, Systems Manager and a Meraki solution can really help you with that device management as well. And uh, we are trusted in thousands of primary education schools, as you can see here. This is obviously just you know, a small portion of our uh, really uh, amazing and excited customers that have found tremendous value in Cisco and Meraki in a Cisco Meraki solution. Uh, down there towards the bottom is Wayne Highlands. It's actually one of uh, my schools in eastern Pennsylvania. And I got to tell you, they are just uh, such a Meraki advocate and uh, really uh, have found so much value that you know, any of these schools would be happy to you know, hop on a call, talk to you about their Meraki deployment. I just say, you know, if you're interested in in hearing more about uh, customers near you that have chosen Meraki, feel free to reach out to your Meraki rep and we'd be happy to put you in contact with uh, one of the thousands of primary education schools around you. So with that said, I'm actually going to pass it over to uh, David Overton, uh, Senior Director of Information Security at Orange County Public Schools, where he's going to talk about how he simplified IT with remote management. Uh, so thanks again for uh, covering today, uh, David, and uh, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for, for showing up. Uh, with Orange County Public Schools, can I get next slide, please? We are the ninth largest school district in the country. We have over 209,000 students, about 24,000 staff members, uh, and roughly a, almost 200 schools uh, throughout the, the county, which is pretty large. So getting boots on the ground has is, is always been a, a, a challenge for us. So as you see in the third bullet point, we're reactive and time-strapped. Our network team consists of a total of nine folks to, to run the entire district. Uh, six networking or school networking uh, folks, two enterprise level networking uh, engineers, and we also have uh, a gentleman that takes care of all of our uh, uh, design. And, and so we needed a solution for, for us to, to maximize what we do. Leading a, being a leader and rolling out the one-to-one -one laptop uh, initiatives increases our bandwidth needs, our, cons our security concerns, and also our internal threats. So being able to be more nimble, more re proactive in our security posture, let alone doing the basic networking things, are something that we took into consideration with uh, when we selected our product, and Meraki came out up above everything else. Next slide, please. So again, we talked about why or some of the factors that went in to choosing the Meraki. So the remote management, the dashboard, I can't say enough good things about that. We're able to drill down into a, in a specific classroom and look for MAC addresses. We're able to uh, troubleshoot problems before we even get there. So we have an idea. With the legacy uh, network things that we did, we have to get to the site, then log in, then try and start triaging the issue. Who knows what it could have been? It could have been uh, our ISP went down. It could have been anything, any number of things that we've all experienced. So with having the short staff in over 200 schools, we have to do something different. We had to be different. We had to think differently than what we've normally thought of in, in prior years. So without 
having the full team or or being able to send multiple people at a to a school to to troubleshoot these the dashboard allows us to uh, give help allows us to make sure that our environment is secure and start some proactive stance and especially around security if you all notice I am the the Senior Director of Information Security, or the CISO. Security is very important to me. I can start seeing patterns from that dashboard. We understand what our, band, what our baseline is, what our bandwidth usage is, and we start looking for anomalies. That way when the shadow IT happens, and I know it happens to all of us, we can start picking those things out. So Prior to that, we have what's called technical support reps, and I'm sure every school has them, every school district has somebody at the school to help them with their, with their technology. We have them as well. The, the, the problem is we have some that, are, that have varying skill levels. So some skill levels are advanced where they can go into the legacy networking and uh, do. There are some that can't. With Meraki, we're able to see that and start the the triage and start isolating the issue. If it is something as simple as a cable, you don't want to send an engineer or an assistant director out to the school to swap a cable. These folks now can be efficient in what they do in supporting their schools. Putting together a future-proof technology. So what what we're doing here is looking towards the future. Again, we have to change what we do. We can't continue on the the old adage of we we put it in. Oh, everybody has to SSH into a a router or a switch. Then they do the configurations. You know, with, with Meraki, you're able to get that gold image, put it to the cloud then drop it back down onto the Meraki gear and you're good to go. Can I get the next slide, please? So here's something that we're really proud of. Uh, we've had a team that has been out working and deploying these school Meraki after hours. And some of them are four hours. It's a really quick turnaround time. Those guys have been doing such a fantastic job that, that I really want to recognize them. I, you, as you see the timeline here, they start showing up about one o'clock and, and start walking to school. Then, it, not to interrupt classes, then they start hanging the access points, and then uninstall the legacy uh, gear after school ends. Install the new gear, test the network. And everybody's out. It's just that simple. With a good Im implementation plan. It's just that simple. It's going to help. So for us, we, we needed to, again, start changing the way we were doing things. So we're standardizing our SSIDs, administration, guests, and students. Each one have different access roles. You can do different things. Of course, we don't want students on the administration side. They don't need to be in uh, adding grades because we all know what they're going to add. Everybody got an A. Well, yeah, okay. And our guests, do we want guests to have access to anything sensitive? And anything sensitive is, is proprietary. They don't need that. Making sure that we have the bandwidth with the increased one-to-one -one ratio that we're doing, we're rolling out 45,000 devices each year. So we need bandwidth. It's going to keep coming. It's going to keep increasing. So we need to be able to, to move on to that. And again, with the short staff, with the smaller staff that we have, we've got to have the central management. It's, it, makes it makes our jobs that and our lives that much easier. Um, for, for us, again, for, for information security, we can start looking and gaining that baseline. Then we can see, I can see all the schools, I can see uh, drill down the schools, I can drill down the classrooms. If I know, if I can pick out patient zero, then I can do, I can block off their machine. This also helps us in finding devices. If there's a device out there, I can't find it, I can go into the Meraki 
dashboard and I can find this. Again, that one to run device rollout, it is, um, it, it's going to change your world. Everything rolls on the cloud. Everything pushes through, through your network. So you need something that's going to allow you to be more nimble. If you have a big staff, a big networking staff, then that's awesome. But most of us don't. This is going to help you. Doug, I'll turn Perfect. it back over. Oh, thanks so much, David. Um, great recap. And I really love the slide that showed you, know, you were able to deploy a Cisco Meraki solution in four hours. I imagine they gave you and your staff, um, you know, since it's a limited staff, a bunch of time back to, you know, get back to the one-to-one -one initiative and other things on your plate, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, moving that, that four-hour window and then getting back to the other day-to-day -day stuff that, that we have to, to, to maintain. It's all about being to maintain, sustain, and, and advance, and that's, that's what we do. Absolutely. Well, great uh, recap. Again, thanks for uh, covering your um, experience with Cisco Meraki. And uh, with that said, we'll actually jump into um, a live demo of our dashboard here at our headquarter location in San Francisco. So uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and get logged in. And I first want to show, um, you know, you can, again, log into our dashboard because it is cloud managed from anywhere in the world on any device. Uh, I'm on my laptop uh, here on our network, and uh, you can see just from our main page of our uh, Meraki.com, you can log in up in the top right-hand corner. Um, we'll go ahead and log in here now. And uh, what that's going to take you to is our live um, uh, network here, again, at our headquarter location in San Francisco. Um, as I navigate to that network, um, what I'll do is take a moment and uh, just point out that we have multiple networks uh, across the, you know, across the world. We have some locations in Sydney, in the UK. Um, but to give just a, a step back and a little high-level overview, if nobody's seen the Cisco Meraki dashboard, the way things are laid out, I think it's important to to highlight the how again, again how simple and intuitive uh, the Cisco Meraki dashboard is. So. Uh, starting here on the left-hand side, you can see everything in gray. Uh, we have a drop-down box for each network, or uh, essentially the way I like to think of it is a, re a receptacle for Cisco Meraki gear. So you can either have your networks built out by location, like we have our Chicago office, our London office, Sydney office, our San Francisco location where I'm uh, based out of. Um, so again, this is something that can be customized by you and really makes it easy to jump uh, between networks in case you want to you know, separate them for whatever reason. Um, now below that, you have, uh, starting with network-wide, um, you can see basically inf any information for your entire network. So this would be the San Francisco network that we're looking at now. Um, and you, know, you can see each product you have within that network. If you have switches, wireless, systems manager, cameras, Insight, whatever the Meraki product is within that network, you'll see here on that left-hand side. And again, this is, you know, the word gets tossed out a lot, probably overused in our industry, uh, single pane of glass, but this really is uh, the only true single pane of glass solution uh, out there right now where you can have both your wired and wireless clients in one uh, location. So pretty amazing here that you can jump just with a few clicks between your switches and APs and so forth. Uh, so again, on the left-hand side, very simple um, to jump into the product you'd like. And then uh, hovering over each product, you'll see that there's really only two categories. Uh, you can either monitor or you can configure. Uh, monitoring would be any sort of reporting if you want to see you know, your switch ports in this example or um, your, just all the switches uh, that you have within your network. Uh, or if you want to make configuration change, like access policies or set a port schedule so you, you know, maybe save some power over the weekend or summer, uh, summer break or so forth, you can do any of those configuration changes on the right-hand side. So, again, just want to spend a little bit of time and, and acclimate everybody to the way our dashboard is laid out because I think that does really speak a lot to, again, our mission to simplify IT. It, if, if I can go in here and navigate 
uh, our dashboard. Trust me, anybody on this call can. It's that simple and intuitive. Um, so to, um, to highlight what we're looking at now, again, this is under network-wide, and what we're monitoring is all our clients. And so what you can see here is all the clients, both wired and um, looks like we're looking at just wired clients right now, uh, but this is network-wide clients for our Meraki location. And uh, you can see whether they are uh, connected or whether they are disconnected. Uh, you also get a nice uh, graph here of traffic within this network for the last day. You can drop that down and see the last week, the last 30 days, and so forth. Um, you even get some of that really amazing uh, Layer 7 uh, application visibility uh, here, like the things like Hotmail and Yahoo, Gmail, YouTube, Netflix, you know, all those things uh, that you may want to see. Uh, back to David's point, if you have a nice baseline, uh, you can really see if anomalies pop up. So with that said, um, I'll, I'll take you everybody through a little scenario that, um, you know, I hear often from my customers, uh, similarly to what David said, is if an anomaly does pop up, let's say, you know, a student comes to you and says, uh, you know, they're having, you know, a, a bad experience on the network, they're seeing uh, a lag or whatever the case may be. Uh, you can quickly jump into the dashboard, uh, maybe hover over all the applications, and if there's a, an anomaly or a spike in, you know, let's say an application like Netflix, YouTube, because we all know bandwidth is a very limited uh, resource. It's um, very finite, and uh, you need it to to really, um, you know, perform all the other mission critical activities. So, you know, if you see a spike in certain applications and you want to dig into that for more details, it makes it really easy when you're in a Cisco Meraki dashboard. So, for example, here uh, we'll hop on and see uh, Netflix, for example, but let's say that was the number one application that's out of the normal. Uh, you can jump in and see, you know, traffic patterns. Looks like we had a pretty big spike in Netflix uh, usage here in our San Francisco location, which, you know, we're uh, obviously working, but we like to have fun as well and watch a little bit of Netflix on the side. And um, again, in this scenario, let's say, you know, I'm going in and noticing, wow, you know, one individual is really contributing to a high uh, spike, a lot of usage in, in this application. Uh, Ryan, for example, is actually somebody that sits right next to me here in the office. And 34% uh, of the Netflix usage on our network uh, is attributed to Ryan. So, um, you know, after this uh, webinar, I'll probably give him a little hazing and say he should get back to work a little bit. But uh, if this was one of your students, again, you can quickly see, okay, looks like Ryan's contributing um, to this uh, spike in Netflix usage. You can see what type of device he's using, uh, the operating system, how much he is being used, and so forth. You can even click on Ryan. So if we were to click in on Ryan, we'll give it a second to load, and you can see uh, Ryan's status here, when, they, when he was last seen, on what date, what SSID he was associated to last, even the access points that Ryan was uh, last associated to. And you can see a little map here on the right-hand side. Everything's a little grayed out, but the one that is nice and, and deep green would be the um, AAP that they were, uh, he was connected to last. You even get a nice topology, which I'll jump into here in a moment. But all the really, you know, interesting and important uh, networking information here on the left-hand side. Then you can see Ryan's usage. Uh, so you can see for the last day, last two hours, last week, and so forth. Uh, so if you need to get a, a larger scope or a larger view, you can do that. Um, you even get, you know, a nice pie chart here to show, you know, Ryan's application usage. And i got to say, Ryan uh, is pretty unproductive. <laughs> here uh, with a lot of Facebook usage and so forth. So, you know, again, you can get all that information with just a few clicks. Um, but, you know, let's say again back to the scenario, I want to take action on Ryan. You know, he's using up some of that precious bandwidth, and I want to apply a policy. Um, we can either, you know, whitelist, completely block Ryan if I'd like to, um, and I can even say something like CIT, um, or stop watching Netflix and get back to work. Uh, whatever message I type in here um, will pop up on the uh, user device, so I can either you know, block them or whitelist them. Or I have a third option here too, where I can, either, I can also add him to a group policy. Um, these are customizable. These are examples of ones we have set up here at our headquarters. 
Uh, for example, I can set up, you know, where we throttle any video and music applications. So, you know, that would be pretty good for this example. Or maybe, you know, that it looks like Ryan's not using too much music, so maybe it's just no video, and we uh, throttle him back where he can't use any video. Or maybe I add him to a, just an overall bandwidth abuser group policy, and uh, we have those group policies set up to, you know, set the, the um, bandwidth limits for uh, each user. So I can do any of these, apply these group policies directly to Ryan's device, um, you know, straight from, from here. So what's great about this, again, I just showed you in probably four clicks that we went from network-wide visibility uh, for both wired, wireless, all the way down to a specific client. Uh, where I could take action and actually, you know, block whitelist or add them to a group policy. So pretty, uh, pretty amazing again to be able to go uh, down that rabbit hole and get directly into the client device. Um, you can even troubleshoot from here too. So in the reverse, if Ryan was to come and say, you know, I'm having some some issues, you can ping that device and get loss rate, average latency, and so forth. Um, now, David even hit on, you know, those one-to-one -one programs and rolling out, you know, multiple devices, um, a, a Cisco Meraki solution that I mentioned briefly uh, that makes that amazingly simple is uh, our Systems Manager. So because Ryan has Systems Manager installed on this device, um, we can actually get even more visibility into uh, to Ryan and uh, what he's doing both on and off the network. So if I was to click into Ryan's device from here, you can see his model, the serial number, uh, warranty, uh, operating system, uptime, just, you know, all that amazing information. Um, and then even, you know, if he's complying with geofencing policies, uh, any security policies I may have set up, uh, and these security policies are dynamic, meaning, you know, if he was to come out of compliance, it can alert you or take action on his device without your needing to get in there and actually uh, enforce things. Um, so pretty amazing that, you know, set it and kind of forget it if these devices uh, become non-compliant. Uh, you can also see storage of that device, all the network information. Uh, but really the most powerful stuff when it comes to Systems Manager are these live tools. And I mentioned it briefly in the presentation, um, but with Systems Manager, you just get even more live tools and more, um, you know, administrative rights uh, when you're, you're dealing with those one-to-one -one devices. So, for example, I can uh, change the password on that device, lock it, uh, even a selective wipe. So if I don't want to erase the entire device, I just want to uh, select what is wiped, I can do that or erase it completely. Uh, so obviously, you know, I'm sure everybody on the call, if you have a one-to-one -one initiative, has had to deal with lost or stolen devices. This is a great way to get in there and ensure, back to David's point, that, um, you know, security is upheld because that is front of mind in, um, in primary education. And then, you know, I won't get into each of these, but you can see screenshot, remote desktop, and send notifications, uh, updates, and so forth. So a lot of really, really amazing tools that, again, back to our mission is to simplify your life so you can get back to the other things that we all know are on your plate. Um, and it's really just about giving you back time. But hopefully what you're seeing here, again, is that you're not sacrificing any of the features, any of the functionality that you may be accustomed to in a legacy solution. It's just so much more simplified. It's so much more intuitive and so much more, uh, easier to access with Cisco Meraki. All right, so with that said, uh, hopping back to Ryan's device, um, what I want to highlight on here is, uh, again, another scenario, let's say, you know, Ryan comes and says, well, you know, I was having uh, an issue connecting in this part of the building. Um, doesn't seem to be happening everywhere, just when I was in homeroom or something. Um, but point is, um, we have a built-in, probably one of my favorite parts of dashboard is our topology page. And when you have a Cisco Meraki switch, we build a topology page for you. And I don't know if anybody on this call has done a topology uh, page in the past. I know my customers tell me if they have, a lot of times it's expensive, it's time consuming, and it's out of date the second you create it because you know you unplug one uh, port and, and plug it into another and all of a sudden it's out of date. So with Cisco Meraki, we do the hard work for you and build out a topology page. So you can see I clicked in under Ryan's device and uh, what happened is 
we can go to a topology page of our entire network. And again, this is our actual network here in San Francisco. And you can see everything's slightly grayed out. And that's because we went in through Ryan's device. And you can see this AP that's darker than the others is the actual MR52 that Ryan was last connected to. So if Ryan was to come to me and you know, say he was having an issue of connecting, I could quickly see, OK, well, this device, uh, this MR52 is green. Um, there doesn't seem to be alerting, because you can see color codes are you know, yellow if it's alerting, red if it is completely offline. Uh, so in just a matter of seconds, you're seeing, OK, this has got to be, I probably want to uh, hone in my resources on the client device rather than you know, it being a network issue, right? So again, simplifying your life, giving you back time um, so you can you know, get that troubleshooting out of the way and, and get them back to, back to learning. So, uh, you know, again, this is something that we build out for you. I'm not sure if we have any that are red. If they are, we're constantly testing here. We have a, a lab here at our location. So, um, you know, seeing yellow or red is, is uh, pretty standard. But nothing is uh, currently offline. Um, we even built out a Layer 3 topology page. You can see it's in beta. Uh, but again, this is back to the point of um, security and firmware updates and things like that. Um, a lot of people on this call are used to, you know, security updates, and that's great, of course. Uh, but with Cisco Meraki, we push out brand new features and uh, solutions to even existing customers. And a lot of times, you know, people are unaware. It's something that uh, goes unnoticed until it's uh, until it's needed. And it's amazing to have a customer call you and go, "Man, I was really, you know, looking for layer three information, and guess what? It's in my topology page. I had no idea." That simplified my life, and uh, and that's why I love Meraki. So, uh, anyways, point back to layer three. We do that here for you. Um, you can hover over any of these and see VLAN, clients, all that kind of stuff uh, for your whole for your whole network. Uh, so back to layer two. Um, now that we uh, have cleared out Ryan's specific device, you can see that uh, whether it's Cisco Meraki security cameras, whether it's uh, switches, any other. Cisco Meraki device, APs, whatever the case may be, um, can be seen on our topology page. And uh, I probably won't be able to choose the exact AP that Ryan was on, but um, let's again say, you know, maybe this in the scenario, it's yellow instead of green. Um, we wanted to get more details on why maybe Ryan's having uh, an issue on that access point. So if I hover over, I can see uh, this access point and, and click on this MR52. And from here, you're going to see an interactive map here on the left-hand side where it's located in the building. We happen to be using Google Maps, but of course, you can upload a custom map, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, we got the MR52, um, what type of the device, how it's named, uh, the address, what SSIDs it's broadcasting, channels, all that, again, really rich information, the, the stuff that you're all accustomed to seeing on a daily basis, um, but it's all included here. You even get uh, live data. So as we let this load, we're going to see live um, uplink traffic from this specific access point. Uh, you're going to see current clients and how many are connected in this case too. Uh, radius and VLAN request statuses, radius, DNS, uh, ARP, so forth. Um, it's connectivity over time. So you know, in the event that you know, again, Ryan came and now I see that uh, this access point is maybe yellow or even red offline. You can see when that uh, AP maybe went offline and um, get a little bit of a better idea of what may have caused it at that point. Uh, you can see overall usage, uh, clients within the last day, how much usage was on this access point, a little over three uh, gigabytes in the last day and so forth. I could click on any of these hyperlinks to go into a direct client. Um, so again, not sacrificing any information. Uh, but it's all in one easy place to find and uh, is easily di digestible uh, for whatever the case may be. So that's under the summary. And uh, I won't get into each of these tabs, but I want to highlight the RF tab here because this again goes back to uh, all the great feature enhancements uh, that we often come out with um, just on, on a regular basis. And this is one of our newest. And uh, a lot of the people on the call, if, if you've heard of Meraki in the past, it's most likely uh, because of you know, our amazing wireless portfolio. Uh, that's really been our bread and butter. That's what we're best known for. And what I love is that this RF tab is brand new 
and it's for wireless, right? So even our um, most legacy solutions continue to evolve and get better over time. And this RF tab is available for our oldest access points to our newest access points. And again, it's free. There's no tiered model uh, of what you get to see in dashboard. It's all included uh, for every customer. So what's great here is this RF tab will show you or give you the option to troubleshoot on uh, 5 gigahertz, uh, gigahertz or 2.4. And uh, what's cool, again, you can hone in on the, uh, the time frame you're looking at or the window of time. Um, but each one of these little dots down here represents an event. So in the event, um, you know, I want to hover over, maybe remember on the last summary page, I saw that the AP went offline at a certain time. I can come back here to the RF tab and uh, hover over that time and see, okay, there was events. I can see details, of course, this is hypothetical. So what I'm seeing here is these events are uh, channel auto RF channel changes. You can see the old channel, the new channel, um, and so forth. So you get more details into what uh, occurred during that time. And then even during that time, you can see how, much, how many active clients uh, were um, uh, associated with this access point its channel utilization, overall usage, and so forth. So again, you can see, you know, maybe this is out of your norm, back to David's point, um, in the number of clients um, and then overall usage and can kind of dig into a little bit more on why that may have occurred. So really fantastic uh, troubleshooting tab there. Um, but with all Meraki solutions, you're gonna get this trouble, uh, the tools tab. And this gives you that remote troubleshooting that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can ping this device um, if you have uh, distributed or um, you know d uh, locations that are spread out. Uh, one great uh, solution here is that you can blink the LEDs for an AP. So if you're trying to navigate somebody to where this AP is located, simply blink that LED, um, and then you know all the throughput and trace route and all that. Uh, uh, fantastic troubleshooting tools right at your fingertips. And again, you can be on a beach in Hawaii on vacation. Hopefully you're not having to work on vacation, but if you get an emergency, you need to dive in and, and do some troubleshooting, it's all here within the dashboard. And you get location and event log and all that uh, great information as well. Again, only, I'm only going to be able to, to touch on a fraction of what you can do in the Meraki dashboard, but hopefully that gives you a nice sense, um, at least from a wireless perspective. Now for switching, you know, again, back to that single pane of glass, if I want to jump over from wireless to, to switches, I can do it from the topology page. I can also hover over here on the left-hand side, jump into our switches. And this is a full list of all the Meraki switches we have at our location. We have, you know, closet switches and distribution switches and so forth. So, you know, you can see here if they're yellow, they're alerting. If they're red, they'd be offline and so forth. Um, but for today's purposes, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and jump into one of our closet switches here. We'll just choose a 350 uh, 48 full power switch. And um, what's great about this is you're going to see very similar, um, if you're going to have a very similar experience to our access points. And that's what I really wanted to show you today is, you know, whether you have one product with Meraki or multiple, once you learn the dashboard, and again, it's so simple and intuitive that really anybody can, uh, the, once you learn it, you can apply that same knowledge to any Meraki product, the wireless switching, whatever the case may be. Uh, very similar information here on the left-hand side. Uh, and then you get a nice visual representation. This switch uh, isn't overly utilized <laughs> as some of the switches may be. Uh, if there was a lightning bolt here, that would be a PoE. Devices plugged in will tell you if it's PoE, uh, if it's drawing PoE power or not, uh, what ports are, are connected, which are disconnected, um, and so forth. And then you get same historical uh, data, connectivity over time, client usage, any clients that are associated as well. Um, you get that really cool troubleshooting tab uh, with very similar troubleshooting options like pinging and, bl and blinking the LEDs, doing that uh, throughput and so forth, but I really want to hover over this cable testing option uh, because I've had a few customers have reached out saying they can't believe how amazing it is that our switches include the option to test cables. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I've had to, you know, pay for a service or, you know, purchase expensive machinery. It takes time, all that where, you know, sit back, Meraki uh, switches will do the cable test for you. 
Uh, so I've had a few customers really blown away that that is an option um, built into our solution out of the box. Nothing additional need, needed to pay for. So uh, again, just wanted to you know highlight that it's a very, very similar uh, type of experience, whether it's our um, access points or switches. Um, you even saw in our systems manager as well. Um, so, you know, one thing that um, I'll kind of leave you with is um, a, a nice overview section here. I'm sorry, the a summary report. So, again, as an organization, I might have multiple networks um, built into my organization, so either by location or by uh, Meraki device type. What's cool is if you go to organization summary report, you're going to see a summary of all of your networks, or you can hone it down to a specific network um, or your entire organization, like I said. Um, you can even drill down by SSIDs or, or expand your results to either the top 10 or, or so forth. Um, but again, this is all customizable, and what's, what it's great is it's going to give you something that um, can be either exported to Excel or even emailed um, or uh, e emailed to somebody, either yourself or to somebody that you uh, may want to provide reporting to a board or whoever, um, just so that they can see, back to, to David's point that I love so much, is you know setting that baseline. When you have these automatically set and sent to you, you can review them at your leisure and just see, okay, is everything within the norms, right? Is there any outliers that I may want to look into a little bit more? So. Uh, again, it's so uh, um, easy, intuitive, and simple to navigate, but we also want to make it where you can set it and almost forget it, you know, get these alerts sent to you or these uh, summary reports sent to you and uh, review at your leisure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, back to a few things that, um, that David had mentioned, too, the ability to uh, grant access and um, and allow people to have different uh, or, um, uh, rights to your network so that, you know, if you have people that do some troubleshooting, but you don't want them to have full visibility in your network or full um, administrative rights, uh, you can go in and really get granular around who can access what and who can uh, make changes or just view only and so forth. So when it comes to, you know, network-wide, when, when it's our Cisco, Meraki, San Francisco location, you can see because that's the network we're in, we can go to administration and uh, see all the users, whether they have full access, uh, read-only, um, whether, you know, you can set specific admins. Uh, you can even go down to um, uh, specific products. So for cameras, uh, for example, you can actually add people specifically that can view only uh, live footage or any footage, whether they can view an export. Maybe it's only an individual camera or uh, a camera by tag and so forth. So again, back to that point is that you can get really granular with who can see what and uh, in what location. So what my customers love is that you know, you can actually set up, um, you know, remote users like maybe it's local police or local fire, especially in the event of cameras because, you know, maybe they, you know, in the event um, something was to occur, they can have their own login to Cisco Meraki dashboard uh, from any device with no VPN, no uh, cumbersome setup. So in the event something happens or you need remote access, uh, you don't have to worry about anything but uh, your Cisco Meraki login. So. Um, really fantastic to get in there and be able to really set who can do what within your network. Um, and then the last thing I'll uh, leave you with in, the, uh, in our demo today is, uh, again, we want to make it, um, uh, we, we want you to be able to sit back and kind of relax and know that uh, if anything was to occur that you'll be alerted automatically. And you can see that you can set up alerts for your entire network and specifically define who those alerts would go to. Uh, so if there's any configuration changes made, you want to be alerted. Uh, if any network usage exceeds over a certain amount in a certain amount of time, you can do that. If rogue APs are detected, again, you can get um, as granular as you'd like. And then we break it out to you know product specific. If you want to be alerted when an AP goes offline, switch, a camera, phone, systems manager, um, any of these, um, you know, uh, will let you. Uh, define who will actually be alerted um, so that, you know, again, if, if something was to go down, you'll, um, you know, you'll be alerted immediately and be able to take action. So 
Uh, again, not something we, we don't want you to have to be in the Cisco Meraki dashboard all day, every day. We want to give you back time to uh, get back to the things that you're really truly passionate about. So with that said, uh, we have a little bit of time left. Um, so I'm going to just go back to uh, the PowerPoint and wrap us up here. So when it comes to a Cisco Meraki solution, uh, we call it our full stack. And uh, as you saw today, what that's going to give you is just so much more visibility, so much more um, 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 tools and uh, things to troubleshoot and, and make your life so much easier when you leverage that full stack solution with access points, security appliance switches, systems manager, um, um, Meraki Insight, or even security cameras. And we were only able to really brush the surface on only a few of the products. but. I urge you, after this call, if there's anything else you want to see in addition, uh, you can always reach out to your Cisco Meraki reps, and we'd love to cover specific products and even in, in more granular detail. So for next steps, uh, I would strongly urge you to check out our blog at meraki.cisco.com forward slash blog. That's where you'll get a lot of really great up-to-date information as we release it. Again, I have customers call and say, I didn't even know that was available, and it's been available for months. Uh, the blog is where you'll see that uh, actually announced. So great place to start. Uh, secondly, uh, if you'd like a risk-free evaluation, we would love to send you any piece of Meraki gear. Um, so you know, just go to meraki.cisco.com forward slash eval. Let us know what you'd like to evaluate, and we'd be happy to get that over to you right away. And last but not least, I would strongly urge you to join the community, whether you're an existing Meraki customer on the call today, or maybe you're just thinking about a Meraki solution. This is a great resource because it's led and, and contributed to by current customers. Um, you know, this is unfiltered. We're not, you know, monitoring or deleting unfavorable content. This is 100% a community, and it's uh, extremely positive because um, these customers, um, much like David, just want to talk about their uh, solution and, and how they've really found a ton of value in Cisco Meraki. So uh, I'd, I'd really urge you to check out our community, community.meraki.com. Um, and with that said, I just um, really want to you know, thank everybody on this call, including David. Um, thanks again for your recap today, and it really was inspiring and love to see how quickly you were able to deploy a Cisco Meraki solution. So thank you again. Um, well, before we wrap it up, um, I know we have a few more minutes. So if there's any questions that uh, you may have, we're happy to answer those live. Um, and there were a few uh, I'm being told. So this one is actually for David. Uh, how would you, or how do you work with only three SSIDs? Uh, how do you handle one-to-one -one, one -one devices? The three SSIDs are based on the categori uh, categorization of, of the users. So if they're a guest, uh, they, they get you know, just a kiosk mode. They go right out to the Internet. That's it. The, the, the students are just that. They get everything they need from that SSID. Of course, we have to match bandwidth with it, but it, it, it works. And for administration, it's the same thing. Uh, is there a cause or need for others? Yeah, some schools have a, a, a small business case that they can present to get these uh, these others, but that's what we're transitioning to uh, throughout the district, and it's it works a lot better than the five or six that we have now Great. in some schools. Okay, and how are you handling one-to-one -one devices? They're a student device. They're a student device. We have to have our BYOD policy correct, and they're treated as a student. The student is logged into them. They're the student devices. So, and it's it's going to be based off of, of Cisco ICE, ISE, and they fall into uh, what's really network access control in a rudimentary way. So if a student's logged in, they go to the student uh, SSID, student VLAN. If it's a staff member, go to staff member. Okay, great. Um, and what level of effort was required to deploy the Meraki APs beyond the mounting at the school, uh, like configuration and time to functionality, et cetera? <laughs> they almost programmed themselves. I mean, 
once they were hung, wired, you plug them in, the switches will find them, and they're good to go. It, it really is. When you're looking at that versus the legacy uh, access points where you had to configure and, and, and hang around and, and then wait and make sure that it actually connected, it's, it's not like that anymore. Again, we thinking differently to be more efficient and with what we have. So those access points work a lot better. They they really almost sync themselves. Absolutely. Great, great. So um, there's another question, uh, maybe to elaborate on the first one, is um, are you limiting bandwidth for these one-to-one -one devices? And if so, um, how are you accomplishing things like um, you know limiting Netflix, YouTube, and so forth? Um, I showed similarly that you can do group policies and and things like that, or is that how you're doing it? At the moment, no. We're using a uh, enterprise level web filter to to eliminate those things like YouTube and and Facebook and and these things that the students aren't allowed to get to. Staff, different story. But the students, we're, we're using web filtering to do that. But again, all of that's changing because we're our network is changing, our environment is changing. And it's changing drastically. So looking into what, what Meraki can do is definitely uh, one of the top things. I mean, again, that single pane of glass, and that term is used so much, but it's, it really is. When you have a short staff going to 10 different applications to accomplish the same thing or something that we can do if we're at the same screen, it, it just makes sense. Absolutely. Great. So uh, if there are additional questions, uh, you know, again, I'd implore you to reach out to your Meraki rep. We'd be happy to hop on a call with one of our engineers, talk about specifics. And, and again, back to David's point, there is so much that can be done in the dashboard that um, I assure you that we will find a way to uh, enhance the way you think you're doing things currently and maybe cut down some of the uh, the other solutions outside of Meraki that uh, you've been used to using in the past. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Again, David, thank you so much for your time today, and thank you everybody uh, who hopped on the call and learned a little bit more about Cisco Meraki. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you soon.